Yet if, as I hope, basic science becomes part of general awareness, what now appear as the paradoxes of quantum theory will seem as just common sense to our children's children. Stephen Hawking wrote over 25 books, continued to teach at Cambridge University, appeared across popular TV shows, and gave us the most comprehensive understanding of cosmology. How did he manage that despite his degenerative condition of ALS? Through different computer programs that helped him communicate. One such program called Elocutor was developed by two Indian engineers, Dr. Arun Mehta and Vikram Krishna. Here is their story. My name is Arun Mehta. I wrote Elocutor for Professor Stephen Hawking, which allows a person who is severely disabled to type and speak using a single button. What happened was that uh, when he had come to India, my colleague Vikram Krishna met him in Bombay and that's how this work started. I met him and it turned out that he wasn't this forbidding figure at all. He was just a fun guy and um, uh, he loved to make jokes and, uh, and he had a serious problem which needed serious attention. And it became so important to be able to be part of developing a technology solution to try and express that humanness which was so much a part of it, to make it easier for Stephen to express himself as a warm human being. And that coughing sound in the background is not somebody doubting it incredibly but my poor dog over here who's got a bit of a cough. <laughs> Right from the beginning, what we were told was the absolute minimum in terms of what a person can do in terms of interaction with a computer, which is press one switch. So, as his condition deteriorated, they found other ways for him to, be, to control that switch. And uh, what was nice about the solution was that Arun had analyzed the problem of somebody who has very, very little movement left. We basically took the ability of a computer gadget, a mouse, the clicking of the button, and took one single click and looked at how many things we could make the computer do with that. And we could do three things with it. One was to sense a click. The other was to sense the lack of a click. And the third was to sense the length of the click. So we took those three aspects and from it we made the ability to create complete sentences very very quickly. Things I told Arun on the phone is that this is what we have to build into the software. That it's not enough to be solving the problem of uh, using very little uh, motor ability when you have almost no motor ability left to create anything on the computer is a huge problem but if we just solve that problem it's not enough we have to be able to use maximize that ability to say silly things because Stephen likes to say silly things what's the most common misconception about your work people think i'm a simpsons character <laughs> see the voice is wasn't something that we did you know, the original voice that he had, that was the text-to-speech output of De a deck talk box. That was the technology of 30 years ago. Um, so that is the characteristic voice that he has. It's actually text-to-speech. And it was one of the very first voices developed for computers to enunciate human voices. Almost identical voice was used in the Doctor Who program. Exterminate! However difficult life can be, teachers have always been there, behind the scenes, showing us the way forward. We tried to tell Stephen was that he could get away from his dialect voice, you know? but the fact is that's what he chose to do. It was also possible for him to make other choices, including getting a good approximation of what his original voice had been. But the software was changing, and what happened was the development tool we had used, which was Visual Basic 6, and we were developing this, as I told you, as an open source project. 
abruptly without almost no notice at all uh, microsoft stopped the development of visual basic 6 that was it they just dropped it basically it meant we'd have to start all over again from scratch and write elocutor again i think it's very understandable that he was uh, uncomfortable with the idea of shifting out of windows what was noticeable was you know his humor and how his face changes how expressive his face is and uh, you know he's a very kind man you know it, it was it was a pleasure meeting him and uh, when one realized how much the person is able to do although he's so restricted uh, that is in itself an inspiration i mean they, on his website there was a page earlier which described his disability in which he says that uh, people ask me about uh, what it is like to live with this disability and he says frankly i don't think about it a lot because there are few things that i want to do that it does not allow me to do so this was you know this optimistic attitude was really what was amazing he was probably in his 20s when the disease was first detected and because they thought it was a very virulent case of the disease they told him he may not have long to live now imagine he lived 50 years and was optimistic and did so much work and right up to the end he was working. It was like uh, being shown, you know, a lamp in a dark room by somebody who couldn't even tell us about the lamp with his own words from his own lips. But uh, he could show people that there are lamps that you can light and you can be part of lighting every lamp. So I think that's that's really something fantastic that we learned from him. We are all time travelers, journeying together into the future. But let us work together to make that future a place we want to visit. Be brave, be determined, overcome the odds. It can be done.